I took her to my penthouse and I freaked it. I, I haven't made my mind up, should I keep it? Should I keep it? I And a Jefferson County grand jury has indicted Chelsea Ship and Cody Arnold for first-degree murder in connection to the death of a 16-year-old girl. Chelsea and Marie Ship lived a life like that of many other young women her age, establishing her presence on social media and seeking engagement. However, her popularity took a steep turn when Chelsea went from being an influencer to becoming America's most wanted. This is the TikToker who murdered a child for her jealous, pedophile boyfriend. Chelsea Ann Marie Ship was a 25-year-old who began her TikTok career in February 2020 by posting small, creative videos that showcased her personal life. Like so many other influencers, Chelsea aimed to engage her followers and perhaps even go viral on her social media platform. She started by sharing heartfelt clips of her dog to attract attention. This is my baby, and ain't nobody finna touch her. Though not a social media sensation, Chelsea managed to reach a substantial number of followers and engagement. Looking back at her posts and feed, people think that Chelsea is a cheerful, heartfelt, and eccentric young woman. Not that social media really defines anyone's life. It's good to keep in mind that Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, or any online sharing platform only portrays a small portion of someone's life. And nothing online is definite, so don't take someone's online presence for who they really are. Anyway, back to Chelsea Ship. So how did this supposedly lively person become a murderer? This isn't an exact timeline of how this tragedy unfolded, leading to the death of a 16 year old girl, but there is enough evidence that led investigators to believe Chelsea Ship was the killer. Well, it all begins with a love triangle involving three main characters. The first person is our TikToker, Chelsea Ship, and the second is a 22-year-old guy by the name of Cody Lee Arnold, and the last person is the victim. Caitlin Nicole Stone. As you may know, there are many different types of love triangle tropes. There's the traditional love triangle, basically the classic form involving three people where one person is torn between two romantic interests. So imagine Twilight, where Bella is split between Edward and Jacob. Then there's the unrequited love triangle. In this scenario, one person loves another who loves a third. The first person's feelings are not reciprocated, creating a triangle of unrequited love. Everyone has a crush on everyone, but no one says anything and everyone ends up single. Finally, the polyamorous love triangle. In this case, all three individuals are aware of and consenting to the romantic relationships, forming a polyamorous dynamic, which may sound a little weird, but it's all right as long as all parties are consensual and legal. Except the case with Chelsea Ship, Cody Lee Arnold, and Caitlin Nicole Stone's relationship was an offset child trap toxic polyamorous love triangle. Because apparently Chelsea Ship and Cody Lee Arnold were involved in a romantic relationship at one point. The pair lived outside of Houston, Texas, in close proximity to one another. Chelsea lived in Crystal Beach, and Cody lived barely an hour away in Winnie, Texas. While they were still engaged in a relationship, Cody became involved with with Caitlin Nicole Stone, who was a 16-year-old girl. Yes, uh, apparently Cody Lee Arnold was having an intimate relationship with a minor, and he confided this information with his girlfriend, Chelsea. And Chelsea, instead of reporting this child praying man to the authorities, she decided to keep this information to herself. And not only that, but she agrees to engage in a three-way love triangle with Cody Lee Arnold and the young Caitlin Nicole Stone. This is why we call it an offset child trap toxic polyamorous love triangle. Because a 22-year-old man was going after a vulnerable 16-year-old girl, and his 25-year-old girlfriend did not report it, and instead she joins them in a disastrous three-way relationship. These two are partaking in lewd acts and taking advantage of young Caitlyn. And no one knew of this bizarre relationship that Chelsea was taking part in, not even her family and friends, and definitely not her TikTok audience. Also, it is reported that although these three people were engaged in this love triangle, there's no evidence to show that Chelsea is said to have not had any intimate interaction with Caitlyn. So the two ladies are mostly involved with Cody, 
It's a Cody-centric relationship, if any of you are wondering. This guy sounds like bad news already. It's Cody Arnold. When he was 17 years old, he was actually charged with criminal mischief for keying a car. It's also been speculated online that he may have been in a relationship with the 16-year-old victim, which you and I know would be an illegal relationship. By the summer of 2021, Chelsea's life had unraveled a little more when she befriended Brandy Moon, an aunt of her friend. The two hit it off quickly and became fast friends. Chelsea even helped her get a job at her workplace called Latitude, a cleaning company so they could become workmates. But shortly after, Brandy was hired. Chelsea was fired from the workplace for unknown reasons but still, the two friends kept in touch. By the beginning of 2022, Chelsea was jobless and was reported to be addicted to meth. She would post TikTok videos about her jobless situation, but not her addiction. However, some viewers did express their worries for her and they thought they spotted weird signs in Chelsea's videos. The woman in yeah. this case, the suspect, the 24 year old, so much activity on social media, a lot of posts complaining about her life, some of them dark posts, but about a month before the shooting, there was a TikTok video where she's kind of in a dark environment, cocking a gun, and the caption said, I feel like I'm crazy. But these are only opinions and speculations. Despite being close, Brandy did not make an appearance in any of Chelsea's TikTok videos or feed posts, nor did she ever introduce Brandy to her boyfriend, Cody Arnold. Anything Brandy knew about Cody Arnold was hearsay from Chelsea or their mutual friends. At this point, it's hard to tell whether Brandy knew that Cody Arnold was also involved with a minor. Knowing that Chelsea didn't share this information with anyone, we can give Brandy the benefit of the doubt. On March 25th, 2022, Chelsea decided to reach out to Brandy. The two hadn't talked for a while, so Brandy was beyond excited to hear from her friend again. Chelsea told Brandy that she was in the area and would like for the two of them to catch up. Remember, at this point, Chelsea is jobless and an addict, so she's not doing too well. There was not much information on how their meeting turned out, but it was reported that Chelsea showed up at Brandy Moon's house with Cody Arnold and Caitlin. She introduced Caitlin as Cody's girlfriend. However, Brandy stated that she learned from a mutual friend that Chelsea was also dating Cody. This was supposed to be a red flag. I mean, besides the fact that Caitlyn was a minor, but maybe Brandy wasn't too invested in her friend's personal life or the interaction was too short for her to spot anything wrong. The meeting lasted about 10 to 15 minutes. Everything seemed as normal as it could be until the next day, March 26, 2022. Brandy received another phone call from Chelsea asking her if they could switch cars, which sounds like a weird request, but I guess it's all right to swap cars with your friends once in a while. Chelsea didn't specify the reason for the car swap other than she needed to do something with it. And I guess Brandy didn't ask too many questions before lending her friend her car. So Chelsea and Cody Arnold drove over to Brandy's place to swap the cars before leaving to do something. Later that day, Brandy was reported to have a girl's night out with some of her other friends. Afterwards, she dropped her friends off and came home early because she thought Chelsea's car was a little too nice and expensive to be running around in, which makes her a caring friend and a trustworthy person. But it also sparks the question of how Chelsea could afford such a nice car while being jobless. It doesn't add up somehow. Well, Back to the story. Around 11 p.m. that same night, Brandy sent a message to Chelsea to have the car switched back, but she didn't receive a reply, so she decided to go to sleep because she had work the next day. The next morning at 8 a.m., Chelsea showed up at Brandy's doorstep looking anxious. Seeing her best friend so worried, Brandy invited her inside to make sure that everything was all right. Chelsea came inside and insisted everything was okay and she was fine. Brandy told her that if she ever needed someone to talk to, she's always there. Chelsea thanked her and the conversation ended right there. Of course, Brandy knew something was wrong. It's that feeling in the back of her mind that she couldn't get rid of, but she didn't pursue it at that moment. As Chelsea was exiting the house, she turned back and blurted, hey, don't forget, if anyone asks, I was with you in Baytown, and Cody had your car, okay? Okay, that definitely wasn't normal. Was this an alibi? Why would someone need to establish their presence and witness unless they are in trouble? Now, Brandy is nervous. Brandy decided to pursue the situation. She asked Chelsea again to see if anything was bothering her because her senses are really giving her a bad feeling. 
She needs to know why Chelsea is acting so weird. In return, Chelsea asked Brandy if she had left her phone on her and she said no, that she left it in the house. Then Chelsea told her to come sit in the car and she'll tell her what's wrong. Brandy followed the instruction and sat in the car with Chelsea. But what Brandy didn't expect was what would come out of Chelsea's mouth, which would forever send chills down her spine. According to Brandy, Chelsea told her, I got rid of Caitlin. Caitlin, as in Caitlin Nicole Stone, the 16 year old minor that Cody Arnold, her boyfriend, is having a relationship. That Caitlin. Not really understanding Chelsea, Brandy replied, What did you do? Beat her up or something? And Chelsea allegedly replied while making a shooting motion with her hand and two fingers, No, I shot her. And she even added, He asked me to take care of the problem and now he has to do what he has to do. Brandy is beyond frightened and bewildered by this revelation. Her friend has just confessed to shooting and possibly killing a 16-year-old girl. Unsettled by Chelsea's confession, Brandy pretended to act normal in front of her friend, but she was deeply worried. She felt the need to report what she had learned because there was a possibility that her car was involved in a homicide. It cannot be a coincidence for Chelsea to borrow her car on the same day she gunned someone down. If that's true, Brandy could get into a lot of trouble, so she decided to call her father-in-law, Brad Moon. It's an awkward call to make. Imagine having to relate that your best friend had possibly committed murder and your car was involved in the crime, but that you had nothing to do with it. Hopefully, Brandy makes better friends in the future. Anyway, Brad Moon, Brandy's father-in-law, passed on this information to law enforcement, and officers began their investigation. The first place they stopped by was Brandy's home to take her statement, and she gave them every piece of information she knew. While at Brandy's home, officers would uncover some more shocking information. Brandy's nephew, Cody Lee Smith, not Cody Lee Arnold, please don't get them confused, they're two different people. Cody Smith told officers that Chelsea had also confessed to him about killing a girl and asked for his help to move the body. Cody Smith reported that he asked her where the body was and she told him it was at Cody Arnold's house. Cody Smith refused to help, of course, but he did provide authorities with all the information he knew about the murder. So this makes two people that Chelsea has confessed to. This woman is not a good criminal. With a potential homicide investigation, law enforcement officers turned their attention to the two main suspects, Chelsea Shipp and Cody Arnold. On March 27, 2022, officers came to Cody Arnold's home and asked if they could look around, and Arnold's agreed. Within minutes of the search, the officers located the lifeless body of Caitlin Stone on Cody's bed. She was wrapped in a duvet and covered in a black bin liner with evidence of a gunshot wound. The officers immediately arrested Cody Arnold on suspicion of murder, but Cody claimed he had done nothing wrong. He began telling investigators his side of the story and switched the blame entirely onto Chelsea. Cody Arnold claimed that on the day of the incident, he had been hanging out with Chelsea and Caitlin and using them. Then, they started arguing over his relationship with Caitlyn, since he was 22 and Caitlyn was 16. In the midst of the argument, Cody said he told Chelsea that Caitlyn could be pregnant because a home pregnancy test had turned positive. He was afraid he would get into trouble with the law because Caitlyn was a minor. Cody believed that the revelation might have upset Chelsea, either because she was jealous of Cody and Caitlyn's relationship or because she didn't want Cody to get in trouble. Whatever it is, Cody claimed she had the motive. So when he stepped out of his bedroom to use the restroom, Chelsea took a gun and fired at Caitlin. He claimed he covered her in a bed liner because he couldn't look at her. And that is Cody's version of how everything happened. It was all Chelsea's doing. Though he couldn't explain why there was a trash bin large enough to place a body inside sitting in his bedroom. This was enough evidence for them to charge him with murder. On the other hand, Chelsea decided to try to escape. They released these photos of Ship, who deputies describe as armed and dangerous, and now on the run. And take a look closely at her tattoos, like this one on her upper arm. Authorities are hoping someone 
out there will recognize Ship and turn her in. But she was apprehended by officers in Liberty Hill on March 31st, 2022. Now, Chelsea had a completely different story from Cody. Chelsea said she killed Caitlyn because Cody asked her to. Apparently, the plan was for Chelsea to kill Caitlyn Stone and Cody Arnold was supposed to dispose of her body, which is why they needed a different car. But after the deed was done, Cody Arnold couldn't bring himself to dispose of the body, so Chelsea had to go to Cody Lee Smith for help, but he turned her down. No matter which story is true or how you look at it, this case is equally heartbreaking and horrifying. We have two adult criminals and a pedo who took advantage of a minor and killed her. In an autopsy report, it was revealed that Caitlin Stone wasn't pregnant. Some people believe that the murder was premeditated by Chelsea Shipp as it was shown in some of her TikTok videos where she displayed violent intentions. We got murder somebody. For whatever reason, this homicide took place. It wasn't supposed to happen. Both Chelsea Ship and Cody Arnold are facing murder charges and are being held at Jefferson County Jail on $1 million bonds. It was a tragedy and we offer condolences to Caitlin Stone's family. And for families with minors, we pray for safety and well-being of your loved ones. Please be aware and be careful of those who are willing to harm and take advantage of your young ones. May Caitlin Stone rest in peace. Do you think what Chelsea Ship did was out of love or envy? If you have a similar story to share with us, please feel free to do so. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.